can't 2v2 unified and Kai Wing. They certainly haven't been given the champions to execute on that, but why not double down? Why not have a super aggressive, heavy ganking jungler and just either start throwing everything at mid lane or start throwing everything at bot lane? Well, we'll see if we end up getting it now. So far, the bans pretty similar to what we've seen all other games this series. Kalista, Rise, Band Away, the Hong Kong Attitude, the J4, the Cast, Syndra all gone on the Fnatic side. Yeah, so a lot of those comfort picks, casting in particular, there's the rise. I've been talking about it all series. Caps is Caps never going to get his hands on it. No. Might see some some other stuff. We talked about the Aurelian Soul last time, and maybe we'll see some fun stuff, but they don't necessarily need to go on to any of those. The Cassiopeia was just fine. And with Hong Kong Attitude, the last second, oh, to no. take the Vandal LeBlanc, and ooh. Rakan is left. Oh, boy. Oh, that's a no-brainer. Locked in by Jezzy. You talked about playmaking champions. He can make do. When I was doing my uh, my research for Fnatic and preparing for this cast, I had in multiple big bullet points. And Pyra, you can attest to this. I've seen them, yes. Hook Jezus on a playmaking champion, and Rakan certainly fits that bill. Now, Zaya is also left. I feel that that puts so much emphasis for Hong Kong attitude. They have to take the Zaya away. They cannot give Rakan and Zaya because it's a free pushing lane. Yeah, for Fnatic, back on their side, not going to be able to get the Zaya up for, Re uh, for Reckless. So instead, they take the Galio and the Gragas, that is a massive front line. And of course, Soaz has been having a field day on this Galio. Uh, how much poison are you willing to give away though? Soaz, like you said, field day on the Galio. His team fighting has looked so well. His control of the side lanes, impeccable. And Galio just gives him so much freedom and mobility to play the side lanes, to play the team fighting. And so far, the playmaking champions that Fnatic have, they have their primary playmaker armed to the teeth with Rakan, and they have their secondary guy in Soaz with the Galio. And they're confident no matter how many bands get thrown away, Reckless is going to be completely fine. In fact, he won't even have to deal with with any bands his way. Hong Kong Attitude deciding they want to keep focusing on the mid. Cassiopeia is off the table. Yeah, so denying that way that one away from Caps. The analyst has said, what does Caps look like if you put him on a different champion in the series? But well, we are going to have that answered. Oh, the Aurelian Soul, not banned. Uh, we've seen it banned throughout the planes, you know, kind of second rotation. Yeah, kind of. Don't want to deal with it, maybe? The little voice in the back of everyone's head. Guys, he plays Aurelian Soul. What does this champion do? He definitely plays a lot of things. Maybe he'll get his chance on it. Stay in the sunlight or in the starlight, as it were. Shen's banned away, of course, by Fnatic now. Don't want to allow the matching of pressure up there. Uh, but I do want to quickly redirect attention back to the Janna. So I talked about all of the engage tools that Fnatic have. That means that Kai Wing's job is so much more important. He needs to be on point with this disengage if his team are going to survive the initial playmaking potential from Fnatic. Mm -hmm. But talking about playmaking as well, they got themselves the Cho'Gath. That's one of those champions we've seen do really incredible things the later the game goes. And now balls back in Fnatic's court to round out their composition. They still need an AD carry. They still need a mid laner. Those questions that are burning will be answered. And Reckless locks in Sivir. Okay, so the uh, the Sivir special there, it's just a Sivir composition. It's got super hard engage, the ability to run full steam ahead. And he did have the option of going towards the Tristana, which is normally the play that AD carries will make here in Desire. Mm -hmm. For Fnatic, they still want to look for a mid lane. Now, what's going to synergize with this one to move real fast straight at the enemy's face? Well, maybe just have a little bit more pressure in all side lanes. We talked about the Aurelian Soul, but this is another one that can get in every lane everywhere. It's the Talia coming out for Caps. And now look at all of this roaming potential of Fnatic ever catch you out of position. As soon as these towers start falling down, Hong Kong attitude cannot slip up anywhere. They will instantly be collapsed upon, either a wall coming through and on the hunt of the entire team rushing through or a massive cannonball entrance from Galio. Well, Hong Kong attitude certainly have their work cut out for them. If they want to try to snowball those lanes, Last couple of seconds ticking down, and it looks like the carry in the mid of choice is going to be the Vladimir for Mission. So no one can stop Mission this time around. He has the ability to hyperscale into late game, and he has free access into the bottom line, or excuse me, into the back line. There's pretty much nothing you can do to stop a Vladimir with Protobelt from getting back there and just causing havoc for your carries. Well, if they can kill him first, Fnatic won't have too much trouble wrecking right on through it. And very mobile composition, as you pointed out. We'll see what they can do in the laning phase. We'll see what they can do beyond. But for Fnatic, sitting pretty at 2-0, and zero, looking forward to sweeping their way into the group stages here at Worlds. Hong Kong Attitude on the back foot, making changes, putting in Gemini, and he's on the Sejuani, a champion he's not won on in the summer. Yeah, and I do want to kind of talk about some sort of uh, gimmick principles of HK's composition. I actually see this composition quite frequently in the LPL, um, and what they like to do is when they get control around the Baron pit, they use the Cho'Gath to secure, obviously, the Feast uh, just as competent as the smite in securing it, but they use the Janna in particular as a disengage option. So they use Janna to create space and just afford that the Cho'Gath is uncontested in the uh, the feast smite battle off. Well, if they're able to get to the point where they can start pulling those off, we'll see. So far, HK have had some real trouble 
just maintaining up against the likes of Fnatic the last time around, falling behind very early. But in game number one, pulling off their signature early 15 minutes and pre-15 minutes domination. We'll see if that continues this time around or if Fnatic are going to put this one away nice and quick, crescendoing their run into the group stages there at Worlds. For Fnatic, very important to try and prove that as a third seed in Europe, they too can be dominating and deserve their spot at the group stages. For Hong Kong Attitude, they just need to hang on and force a game number four. We'll find out as it all goes down right here on Summoner's Rift. And at the beginning of the day, we brought up this idea of expectations. Coming into this series, both Fnatic and Hong Kong Attitude stumbled. It wasn't the dominant performance that a lot of the community, a lot of the fans expected from the third seeds from these power regions. And it's, you know, expectations for Fnatic. They lost out to Misfits. They didn't get that second seed. They didn't take first seed from Europe. LMS, HKA, they come in, they scrape in just before the finish line and say that they're the second strongest seed. And now mission caught out and burning flash. Yep, just trying to get the ward down, but the Fnatic gank squad was strong. This is one of those things you can afford to do when you find yourselves up a couple of wins to just go for a little bit of a cheeky early play. Burning that flash might mean maybe this is the time we see the early gank out of Broxa. It is still fairly difficult to lock down the Vladimir, however, has a ton of safety in that lane, and he's probably going to be pushed forward. Talia likes to, uh, to get as much uh, ground for worked ground as possible, so pushing forward in the lane really helps her can cheat off some pretty early backs or can cheat off some pretty early roams. The Fofo special in the LMS is actually the level two Talia gank roam. So we'll see if Caps has been paying attention. Does it on Aurelian Soul, why not on Talia? Definitely champion's concept. pretty comfortable around. Not quite the same amount of damage, but just fine. Starting things off in the laning phase with that flash already blown. A couple pings flying for Fnatic down bot. And that is something that I really love. I, I loved watching the Aurelian Soul series from Fnatic because Again, the fact that Caps is able to absorb so much and, and get so little in return from his team, when he is on a heavy Rome champion like that Aurelian Soul, like the Talia in this case, just the uh, the impact that he can make around the map with very early Rome rotations. And he's going to have the uh, the room to make that type of impact because Vladimir is not going to contest him in these early levels to keep him locked in lane. And so they've got themselves a lot of breathing room to try and work with. Now, so is a little bit low up in the top side up against Rerus here. He should be perfectly fine once the mini wave starts going his way. Rira's trying to guard it away and deny him any farm he possibly can. Let's see how this bottom lane's going to turn out now that Jezus has the playmaking potential. It's about how he's going to play around that shield cooldown. And though I always say that about Jana, it feels like she always has shield 100% up 100% of the time. Yeah, no cooldown whatsoever. Keep Unified nice and healthy. Now, Unified has definitely been able to do quite a lot this series. Here's that level two gank. Roxa looking to go in, gets the buff off straight into the Rox mission. Gonna get the ghost on. It's only level two. He's not at pool. I don't think so. Getting shoved back on. And it's a flash forward from first blood to Broxa. Ooh, Frank disrespect for mission. He should have known better. He had a target on his back as soon as he had his, uh, his flash burn. He should have been fully aware that it was possible that a gank would happen. And he made a couple of uh, key errors. A, didn't have the pool or didn't pool, wasn't able to walk away and B wasn't playing towards the top side. Is now Caps caught. Yeah, he might be in trouble, but he does have that cleanse. Uses it, turning around on Gemini as Broxa and Caps chucks a rock at the back of his head. Clears down yet another kill. This is already starting off great for Fnatic. Yeah, and they're rushing up top lane. They're, they're just going to take the two free kills, and now they're looking at Cho'Goth. Oh, Rerus has to know something's going down. Oh, no. Moving into the river. Oh, no, he doesn't. They're hanging out in the tri brush and might get baited in. False sense of security for the little Cho'Gath. Justice Punchy and Shield of Durand is going to get the taunt off. And in comes Caps and Broxa. Hello and goodbye. Barrel's coming out, and that's going to be Caps picking up his second kill of the game. And suddenly, Fnatic, three minutes in the game, are 3 and 0. 100%. Percent kill participation on Caps. I feel like I've seen this exact game before. This time we get the gank. Level two, Roxa coming in onto mission. No pool available. He does get the ghost, but then shoved right back in. Come on in here. Flashing for the auto. Uh, and then it just gets worse because Sejuani's going to peek her head and feels like she's found Caps uh, alone and on his own. But Broxa to the rescue is making the back into the lane. Decides to walk over and suddenly Talia is running around with double buff. Oh boy. Oh dear indeed. And to add insult to injury, the fail flash. That's a long replay. <laughs> it just keeps going. HK yeah. just have to relive all three of their lanes pretty much collapsing. A little unfortunate right now for Hong Kong Attitude. That's definitely not how you want to start the turnaround. The one nice thing here is that Rerus understood that he was 100% dead and didn't bother to burn his flash. So he at least still has that to his hand. Yeah, that is definitely different. So. And this Cho'Gath is still going to have a great time once it hits the late game, but the way Fnatic are rolling forward right now with 1,000 gold in the lead, 
Broxa is unleashed, going up towards the top. He might find out the Sejuani in the brush. But he's also bringing Talia. Yep, Caps is already there. This is that hyper mobility, forcing the Arctic Assault out. Gemini has almost no mana left. Now Rearus is isolated. Shield of Duran flashing forward. Shove is going to force him to flash back away, and so has Tank's tower shots. And there's the flash that saved his life. So because Virus didn't uh, panic use it when he was ganked initially, he's able to save his life there and eat up some attention from Fnatic as they collapse top lane. And all that really buys is some CS for mission. Skywing just sits down and tries to hold on to the CS for his AD to carry to come back in. It's been a very quiet bottom lane relative to the rest of the map. Five CS advantage in favor of Reckless, and of course, unified on that cold start. Trying to get a little bit extra gold out for himself. Mission heading back towards the mid, but Caps has got a level advantage. Of course, two kills to nil. And he's very mobile. Boots early. Well, that was a lost chapter. And he totally understands. You know, this is Rerus without teleport, without flash. If he ever gets an opportunity, it's a very easy uh, choice to make to quickly gank that Cho'Gath because you double down on punishing him. If you kill him as the wave is crashing onto his tower, he's going to lose all of that golden experience because he can't TP back to it. And you want to keep the Cho'Gath down, right? He's a late game monster, and you want to be able to make sure that he can't do nearly enough. So as look to cut him off with the Justice Punch, Rupture's going to land. Shielded Duran does as well, though. Level 5 versus level 5. Caps is looking to make a play up towards the top, but We'll see if he's able to make it in time, pinging down Control Ward in that brush. And Fnatic have done a good job laying the groundwork to clear out this runway for Caps to just run straight at Cho'Gath. And Rearus, this is about to be a bad time. Yeah, he's got the wall. Not going to use it, though. Just trying to force back. Rearus can't even get farm now. He'll be able to get it at the end. They don't want to decide to overpush their luck as they had pinged on Gemini a closer towards the bottom side. Mission still free pushing in the middle. Making up for some of that lost CS. And now it's a question of what does Gemini do in return? His top lane suffering, at least his mid lane has the flashback, but he's still waiting on a couple of key levels before Vladimir really becomes a factor. And he can't kink his bottom lane because it's Jana lane. There's no hard CC. So at this point, Gemini is kind of relegated to hard farming his jungle and just trying to get to that level six so he can start providing the necessary CC to his lanes to have kill pressure. Keep it on going. So Jezus there to start pushing back some of that farm as Reckless returns to lane with his BF sword intact. And of course, uh, very much a, a gold build for Unified right now, trying to get Kai Wing to very, very fast Arden Sensor. Yeah, the, uh, the Siphon build? Yep, I guess that's the best way to call it. And the nice thing is, is because of the pushing power, because normally you run this with something like a Twitch, Jana. at least that's what we saw in the LCK, uh, but then you lose all control of lane phase, and so you just lose your tower at about seven minutes, it would be dropping right now. But since he's running it with Zaya, he's able to keep it pressured forward. Uh, so you're, you're just getting the added benefit of a rushed Ardent Sensor without the con of losing your tower at seven minutes. Oh boy, Caps, he's chased on forward. Mission, he wants to dive right under that tower, but the Hemo Plague is not going to be virulent enough to take down Caps. Flash for Flash, however, and at this point, Mission for certain has points into his W, so it means so much more that Caps on the Talia doesn't have the Flash versus Vladimir. Well, that might be all Gemini needs to start making a play once again in the mid, but and he's been having a little bit of trouble trying to keep pace once again with Broxa this game. Speaking of, well, Broxa's already in the bottom side of the jungle, gonna find it empty, though. He does need to be careful. <laughs> Denied the Blasco. Yep, not too much here. All right, we'll take a look down back in the bottom side. Unified, back on the farm game, looking to push back Jezus. He does have an open pathway down bottom, as well as the uh, Sivir ultimate coming soon. All right, Broxa looking to make his way up back towards the mid. And as you said, no summoners up and available, but he decides better of it since he's already back under tower. Needs to watch for the yeah. Rakan engage does have ultimate, so we'll have the quickness available to them, but ganking a purple side Janna is really hard. When she's up in this narrow pathway, if you don't bring your mid laner, it's so much easier for him to find correct angles to disengage the tornado. Oh, there we go, the charm, and here comes the wall. Teleport now coming off the back side of it. They've already got the heal down, but Unified is gonna fall. Reckless picking up one. Rearus going for the rupture, does not land on a cap, and now Gemini's joined the fray. But it's 3v4 all the same. They keep chucking rocks back and forth. Mission. Mission trying to come in for the flank. That's some low Fanatic members. He does not have healing play. Caps, he gets stopped up, but he's able to clean outside of the ice bowl. Arreras, they turn on him, and Broxa throws down the barrel to take him out. Fnatic still trying to hang tough, but it looks like Jezus is going to get taken out. And the pull down for mission here. Justice punching forward, looking for the Vladimir Caps. It's going to fall. No! It's Gemini who does. 3-4-1, and Fnatic holding firm. Look to secure tower number one. They've got four members down at the creep wave behind them, and that was the team fight that HK really needed to survive. Either disengage from the tower, let it go, or win the team fight. 
And now suddenly it is seven to one in a massive goal favor in Fnatic's favor at nine minutes in this game. And it just keeps on going forward. Reckless is going to nearly be able to take this tower out. Should be able to do it with one more or two more auto attacks. Unified left to clean up the farm. And now Fnatic, they've opened up this bot side of the map, can take dragons if they want it, can just keep pushing further and denying Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong attitude. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is that it's a Cloud Drake, the Rift Child is going to be spawning soon, so it's much more important to play around the top side of the map in terms of objective priority, but let's take another look at that. The key thing is, is the fact that Janna is not level six yet, so doesn't have the Monsoon. I talked about how it's still very difficult to gank red side Janna because her Tornado and her Monsoon cover so much more surface area when she's trapped on this tiny little narrow runway, but if you don't have Monsoon, it doesn't matter. They pop unified, uh, mission comes down, but Jezus gets a sick turnaround play. And yeah, that battle dance pretty much doing exactly what he needed it to. And at the end of the day, only one Fnatic member falling. This is what you were talking about a lot earlier in the series about how Fnatic, even when they fall behind, are able to fight it out a little bit better. Well, when they're ahead, you better believe they can do it. Super easy, and Caps is just on fire right now. 4-0 and 3, again, still 100% kill participation for this game. I believe he was close to 100% in the last game. Oh, yeah. And when you put resources into this guy... When well, you give him a champion, you can do something with. Honest Talia, he rocks. I'm not even going to give you a laugh. I saw the smile, though. That's good enough for me. I'll give you solid, solid 6 out of 10. All right. Maybe I can do a little bit better. It's not even a passing grade higher. Mm, I mean, I think I can do a little bit extra credit. What's Talia's favorite restaurant? I don't know. The Hard Rock Cafe. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I could do better than that. But I'll leave it for a little bit later. Fnatic still on a massive gold lead. Three and a half thousand here at 11 minutes into this game. And it looks like they just keep the pressure on in the mid. Mission's gonna have to run back and we've seen what Jezus can do on this playmaker. Oh boy, hard rock cafe. Oh, it's, it's, not, it's not gonna get any better. What's your favorite movie? No. Rocky. They're looking for a pick here. Yes, they are. Rocks at Jezus, caps all moving forward Let's on the hunt pot. They've got the wall up. See if they can get Kai Wing and Unified pulling back the blades. And Caps wants to go forward. Does get the knockoff onto the Janna and they combo on in. Hello, goodbye. Kai Wing's taken out in the blink of an eye. Yeah, the CC lock doesn't even get a, a chance to respond with the Monsoon. The flick up into the quickness brilliantly played between Caps and they're oh, not done. Going bowling onto Unified oh, yes, and they just keep on diving in the back. And down he goes. It's Caps who's responsible for the final hit onto Unified. Gemini realizes there is no way in hell he's going to save this tower. And Fnatic just keep on shoving this wave, looking to take down the inner at 12 minutes. And Jez is just coming up huge on this Rakan. I know it's really been the cap story, but back to back, perfect engages right there, setting up his team brilliantly. They make the picks, they take down an inner tower. And like I said, eventually we're going to rotate to the top, ten, top lane. Eventually we're going to go for this Rift Child. And it gets that much easier when your creeps have that much control of the bottom side of the map. And it's all about having these key members of Fnatic involved in just about everything. 100% KP, not just for Caps, but also for Broxa. He has been all over this map this game, and it is so nice to see him being a much more active early game presence. I mean, Caps said they were going to show the best version of Fnatic, and I feel like we are getting it because they are just absolutely running over HKA. Yeah, and for Fnatic, this whole turn of events at Worlds so far in the playing stages has been a story of redemption for this team, showing that you know, maybe they weren't able to do it in the European LCS, stumbling at the finish line and getting knocked out of seed one or two contention by the likes of Misfits, but having seed number three, proving that they can still make it all the way to the group stage of Worlds. One more game is all they need to do, and they are well on their way to making it happen. But they still need to look down at HK on this late game, because Caps, that's going to hurt. Well, if he gets that shutdown, Hemo plagues out, throwing rocks once again, but Caps is able to flash the wall, prevent the finishing blow. Mission's already on that ghost, because Brox attacks his way in once more. But Mission's starting to feel more confidence. He's now level 9, has multiple points into Vladimir, so he is going to start to become a threat. Has the Proto Belt. When this starts grouping up into a 5v5, there are still viable options for HK to come back into this game. It's not over yet, so Fnatic, keep it tight, keep it clean if you want to make the EU fans hype. And for Hong Kong Attitude, they just need to make sure they can perform in the clutch to get themselves those fights, get themselves some pimps, get themselves back in the gold game. But we need to see this Zaya come online. They're still going for the Siphon build. Yeah, the unfortunate thing is that while the Ardent Sensor is there, and that's certainly going to help, uh, Unified has like the KFC variety bucket of... <laughs> I, just... I don't even know. He's got two long swords and a coal. It's not a good time. Especially not. You don't want Zaya eating chicken. That's like cannibalism. I got dark. Really fast. 
Rift Herald's going down. Fnatic, they have everything they want right now. And they can use the Rift Herald to break an inner tower. Now, they don't need to use it on this outer. They do have the option, but with a big creep wave and four members, and with HK not in position, they should get it for free. Yeah, nothing HK can really do to try and push this one back, so another tower is going to fall in favor of Fnatic. Still looking to take down the one in the mid, but you got to think, grouping up like this, pretty easy for them to just march right in and take it as well. See, Vlad's giant head on the mini-map blocked the mid lane tower for me. So the cool thing is, is the Rift Herald can be used to break that, which I love Rift Herald as a mechanic to deny a lot of these infinite wave clearing mid laners that we've had roaming around League of Legends for so long. It's like, you got your Orianna, you got your Vatimirs, I don't care. This mid lane tower is going down now because I'm going to five man mid with Rift Herald. Yep. And HK, they're just going to have to hold on to the seats for a while, try and get a little bit more gold in their pockets to be able to make plays. I think it really will be all on this Vladimir. And I want to see what HKA can really do to try and enable him further. I mean, it has to be all on Vladimir right now because uh, Unified is not online right now. Rerus is still feeling very susceptible to Cho'Gath. He's only got his MR. And uh, Reckless is pretty strong right now. Yeah, and he could just afford to side push. And not only is this something he likes to do, generally speaking, even on less safe carries on the Sivir, he can get out a little bit easier. He's got a spell shield on the hunt, can be used defensively as well. And he has a lot of damage to try in 1v1. Now, in this game in particular, because he did get so much attention bot lane, you can see that he's already built up a pretty hefty side lane. But something that is cool about Fnatic and Reckless in particular is that a lot of his CS lead is actually grown post 15 minutes. So this is something that they commonly do, and he does get a lot of gold off of it. Meanwhile, Fnatic are able to pressure on the mid and pretty much lock down the rest of Hong Kong attitude. Rerus is on the bottom side, leading a slow wave of minions down there without a whole lot of defense, but it doesn't really matter, especially because, as you said, trying to push against that infinite wave cliff. In comes Shelly, and that's just enough damage to knock down the mid turret, even with the Janna shield. Doesn't matter. Puts the wall off as well, so no chance mission can come in and get anything done. And they still have the creep wave as well as a lot of health on Rift Rail, and with Vladimir locked out, here comes the TP. HK are looking Got for a fight. And it looks like they do it. Galio coming in, they don't have the damage to finish off on a Kai Wing, but so I surely wanted it. All the same, it was all just trying to clear them away from the tower. Mishing indecisive to come into the back line, trying to find himself a Hemo Plague, but now Rears has turned on to Soaz, who gets the Justice Punch away. Fnatic might have gone a little too far forward, and they might lose Jez is for it. He gets eaten up, and then Mission delivers the finishing blow. And that's one of those instances where Fnatic will always look forward, they'll always look for the re-engage instead of just disengaging. Soaz did the right thing, he got the hell out of dodge, he was safe, and Fnatic were like, bro, you okay? Turned around, got picked off. Sometimes you can't stop for breath when you're trying to run right out of there. So Hong Kong Attitude get a much needed kill for themselves, even if it was just on the support. It gives them a little bit of a breather to try and put some more pressure on the mid and clear the vision in the river. Yeah, it's about the tempo trade. The fact that they then have a uh, inside track on pushing into mid, that's it. So as doesn't take his back, just walks all the way to the mid tower and just waits for them to push in. Uh, taking a look at this though, you can see that the teleport is coming in right now for Choga. So HK are saying we want to fight because they are so deep, but Fnatic just beat them to the punch. So as comes flying in, he zones off multiple members. Vladimir's been locked out because of the Talia wall, and the damage has been done. The tower goes down. This is where things kind of go sideways. So as totally fine. He's able to get out of the rupture, he uses the Falcon Punch, but Broxa and Jezus turned around just slightly to maybe look for the re-engage instead of just walking away scot-free. And as it was. Fnatic just losing out on one member. 18 minutes in, though, they're still very much in the driver's seat with a 6,000 gold advantage. Baron not even up and available yet, of course, and still some serious control in this mid up towards the top side. With Reckless on way clear duty, the Cho'Gath down in the bottom. No teleport available, so Soaz has that advantage. And the beautiful thing is that it's the last standing outer top side, and that's exactly where Fnatic want to put all of their attention and vision. They want to set up for the Baron when it spawns, so you need to set your triangle vision down where exactly what Broxa is doing right now. And they got the wall off, so they make sure that Gemini or just about anybody else can't really get in position to help out Unified and Kai Wing. So Fnatic trying to close this net. However, the rest of Hong Kong Attitude are here. And without a whole lot of minions left to work with, Fnatic might give on this one. But Fnatic can just be patient, because again, this is kind of the last easiest objective for them to take on the map. Just take the time about it. Make sure they can clear wards out as they go. Keeping it nice and dark, so Hong Kong Attitude would have to face check into danger. Of course, Gemini Rerus on the front side, looking to try and push them back out. That red buff should reset in just a few more moments. There it goes. And with the wall gone, all eyes are on Jezus right now. He's the big uh, trigger or go button on this top. Oh, and Gemini is the one who got got on top of the charm is there, but Rerus is still zoning three out on the front. 
Soaz right in the middle getting the shield to Durand out. Even the red buff is in the mix. Looking for Gemini flashing the wall. And in comes Mission around the side. Can they turn the fight? That's a shutdown onto Cat. Looking for more. Even gets the smite down onto the red. And now Soaz is caught up. That's a double kill for Cho'Gath. And finally, HKA welcome themselves into a mid game and finally win a team fight. Vladimir is doing so much work to compensate for the gold difference and the item differences between the rest of his team. Gets into the back line, gets his ultimate across multiple members, and suddenly Unified is hitting so much harder. It's gonna be a bit of an eye-opener for Fnatic right now that they can't just waltz in and take whatever fight they damn well please. So, with the pressure advantage, Unified Kaiwing trying to knock down this tower in the mid, but Reckless is still there with Jazz's to defend it. But the thing is, is that Fnatic don't necessarily need to take the fight. They have all of the tools on this composition that they can sculpt or engineer the perfect opportunity. If they want, just turn onto the Baron, use the wall, and lock them up. It's a bit too early in the game to try that maneuver. They need to wait a little bit more so they can burn it faster, but it will be an option for them if they feel dissuaded by that last 5v5. Yeah, if I'm Fnatic, I definitely want to avoid Rearus at all costs. And Here's why, we'll see this one again. And again, all eyes really need to be on Mission, who's gonna run all the way from base and get around into the back line. Now, the Talia ultimate is down at this point, so like I said, it's really about how Jezus is going to start this fight. Rearus does a good job making sure that they can't immediately follow up on the uh, Rakan engagement. Mission finally joins the fight, gets into the back line, gets a very nice ultimate immediately into a W, and then suddenly his team just starts plowing through. Yeah, Mission even trying to chase down Soaz following all of that. And fortunately for him, the Recon just a little too slippery. Now it's back to business as usual for Fnatic, though, as Reckless once again on the side lane, being joined by his good buddy Jezus as they keep on pushing it. But Baron has hit the rift now. Things did get a lot better, though, for HK. They started to reach some of these big key itemization. You got the Ardent Sensor, you have the ability to ward for Kaiwing in Jana's pocket. Finally, an item is actually completed for Zaya at this point. And you now have two items in the back pocket for Vladimir. Not getting any weaker. Mission starting to have a little bit better of a time. And I'm still looking at Rearus, though. The adaptive helm means the AP damage that Talia can dish is not going to be nearly as effective. All the same, Fnatic still leading the charge here. They should be able to pick up a dragon if they so want it pretty easily. And a lot of vision surrounding that Baron pit. HK have the work cut out for them if they want to deny. But Fnatic do need to respect HKA. They did the smart thing. They grouped up. They've now moved into the Baron Pit area and are clearing vision out together. Uh, but they do need to turn their attention towards that mid lane tower. That should be the next big focal point for them. But you know, how do you break that? You're dealing with so much wave clear from Fnatic. You have to make a pick. That's what they're trying to do. Ooh. Just whiffs on the Ice Bullet from Gemini. I mean, the other option that they can try to do is send Mission into one of those side lanes, send Rerus into the side lanes, but they're running uh, Ghost, and they don't have a double teleport. So, you know, Vladimir is pretty much restricted towards the top lane. Yeah, all that standing gold in those towers, so hard for Hong Kong Attitude to try and take. But you got to think, if they do start getting those fights, those are going to fall like dominoes. 22 minutes into this game, it's and like the pressure and attention is sending towards the top side. Yeah, look at the indecision from Mission. He, he keeps cutting back towards his team, cutting back towards the top lane. Am I pushing? Am I, am I trying to go for this tower? Or are we going to start a 5v5 that I need to be available for? Because, yes, that last 5v5 looked better for HKA. They did win it. But a lot of it was because Vladimir was there. If he's not, they do not win. They definitely need him to be able to do it. Of course, he proved that he could definitely take a sprint into those fights, even getting the wraparound earlier on, right about there on the map. But the indecision is costing him a lot of valuable time. Look at the bottom side of the map. So as it started to uh, set up the big bot wave, you know, Rearus is going to have to disengage, walk down there, does have his teleport, but that's inside track for Soaz to push forward and start cutting mid so he doesn't have to burn the teleport. Limit some of the choices of Hong Kong attitude to try and defend, and now Rearus is going to just get out in time before Brox were to spot him. All the vision that Hong Kong attitude put down around this Baron pit going to be cleared out as they don't have control of it any longer. Ping's flying, Fnatic's still eyeballing all the HKA members in the mid. And as soon as as soon as the defense gets mounted on the bottom side, they move back up to the top, keep pushing the waves. And this is the thing, HKA are still being really responsive to what Fnatic are doing, and they're not driving the tempo. Again, they have, you know, the, the strong Vladimir in a 1v1 scenario. We've seen him multiple times. He feels super confident to look across from Caps. Soaz is busy on the bot side, Ooh. and now there's a pick. Yep, Gemini checking right on in. However, as soon as everyone responds, he is able to just sneak out. The teleport comes in for Rearus. Let's see if he's going to be able to turn the fight in favor of Fnatic. They're split off between the two. Cut off. Reckless Soaz. As Reckless is going to have to flash away, but Rearus is turning right for him anyways. And they decide, even though the front line's chasing Jezus, is going to try to keep the defense going, and they're going to be able to take him down. Those spikes looking for even more as Unified finds a kill. Mission falls to Caps right in the middle of it all. 
just outside of the main part of the fight. It's still a 1-4-2 in favor of Hong Kong Attitude. And Caps is on the wrong side of this fight. At 3v4 on the bottom side, a 2v1 onto the top side. Fnatic won the 2v1 top side, but they lost the 3v4 on the bottom side of that fight. And now Caps in no man's land, just trying to get home. SKA playing catch the caps instead of rushing for the Baron, looking to see if they can get one more pick. Should be able to do it, but gotta be careful. He's still pretty potent on that damage, and this is the cutoff just looking for him as he flashes away, buying a little bit more time for the team, but the kill's gonna be given over to Unified all the same. That's his second on the game. Now, that said, they still have Broxa available. He technically doesn't have Smite, but it doesn't look like HKA are confident enough to immediately turn on the Baron, despite the fact that their jungler's alive and they have Cho. Right, well, here's the start of the fight once again. Gemini looked like he was caught, but he was able to make his escape with the flash. And again, it's just how this gets so separated. Rearus completes the teleport, so this is, you know, a decisive maneuver from HK to say we are 100% going to fight this. And then it's going to be Mission versus Gragas and Talia on the top side, and the rest of HK that are going to run down Jezus and Reckless. And in fact, even though Soaz is there, it technically turns into kind of a 4v2 because he gets split off from his bottom lane. And so it's really can't do much off the back of it either. So at the very least, Fnatic are able to make a catch play or rather a pick off onto mission and he goes down, but they get a lot more damage onto the rest of the members of Fnatic. You can see the damage being dished out by Reckless in that hectic fight. And I believe we just saw core items like the War Mogs coming in for Sejuan. Yep, there, there it is. There we are. Gonna be a lot harder to kill Gemini now. Yeah, and suddenly if you don't all in engage and kill the Sejuani, then that damage doesn't stick, and then you have the potential that these fights get elongated and things get really scary. It's, you know, Warmogs and Sejuani and a Vladimir, so it's almost like all or nothing have to end the fight there because if it goes to multiple engagements, HKA's composition will just outlast. And that's the confidence that we're going to be looking for from HKA right now because we have seen them be indecisive over the course of this series, uh, but also with Godfly in the jungle. So now that Gemini is in, maybe we'll see a bit more of that go button now that they have not so much of a deficit compared to where they were before. This might be the comfort zone. We've been talking so much about, you know, Caps and, and Brox's high kill participation. Well, you look across at Gemini, uh, one in six out of seven kills, he's got 100% kill participation. So certainly leaving his mark on this game so far from the jungle swap. Now the game is all about the mid. Looks like they have found Soaz. However, Caps wants to build the wall and go right in top. They've isolated the Cho'Gath. Mission can't quite get in, but he flashes forward with one man. Hema Plague on to Caps. That looks like the grand entrance. Hero's entrance, I should say, coming on in, looking for more as he helps defend and push back Hong Kong attitude. But Broxa wants to take another fight. Gets knocked sideways onto Rira. Shoved back into the team. Two man taunt goes in. Justice Punch does not find any further damage, though, in Hong Kong attitude. They time to turn on in, looking for Soaz. Not enough damage to finish him off. It, no one gunned down. Exactly. None of this damage is sticking. Yes, Rerus doesn't have the War Mogs, but Sejuani does. Now, she is blinking red, but eventually she's going to start healing back up. You're dealing with Janna. You're dealing with Morwax. You're dealing with Vladimir. If you don't initially win that fight, you will just lose to this itemization and this composition from HKA. Push Fnatic back, at least forcing caps. She had not a whole lot of health and definitely no mana. Gives Hong Kong Attitude some time to reset, pushing waves. Might give them a chance to start controlling this Baron Pit for a change. Definitely need a mortal reminder coming out of Reckless pretty soon. Well, got his Infinity Edge at the very least, but we have to look to see if that's going to be his next item. Redemption does come in for Jezza, so there's definitely going to be some heals on both sides. Will it be enough? It's just such an obnoxious, you know, anytime you play against Vladimir and he gets to that late game stage, he just really reminds everyone why you just hate when he comes into the meta. I need to remind him why he's mortal as well. Mission only gone down twice this game. Once was in that laning phase, of course. Second being that isolated kill. Yeah, birthday boy here in Mission doing a much better job in game three. And HKA, they have really planted their feet and decided that they will not go quietly into the night. They've caught the Cho'Gath on Fnatic's side. However, turnabout is fair play as they look for Brox and not a whole lot of damage dealt to those front lines. And HKA looking to try and turn the fight once again. Rear is tagging his way back out. It looks like they don't want to take this fight, though. Fnatic had the better of them. And Cho doesn't have his more war mogs right now, so that damage will certainly stick to him, but it's not the key target like the jungler, like the mid laner. So Fnatic still not feeling super confident to immediately turn towards the objective that we've been fighting over, which is the Baron. Yeah, when the fights go that close, you've got to think they don't want to take it unless it's absolutely guaranteed for them. Keep it clinical, keep it clean. However, they do manage to grab a minor dragon with the ocean, so it gives them a little bit of extra regen as well. And more options will start to open up for Fnatic. The teleport's coming back up for Soaz. You can see it's just about ready for him, so he's going to feel confident now to reach out towards those side lanes uh, and start creating different pressure points to pivot around. For a game that has Fnatic up five towers right now, it definitely feels awfully close, Froskarin. Those late game carries and team comp from HKA certainly can match a 5v5. Yeah.
Well, and we, we started this series talking about how important it was for HK to be lane dominant. That's how they like to play things out. But as much as we talked about Fnatic showing some different styles of play, multifacets, we're seeing that from HKA as well. A little indecisive sometimes in those fights, but when they do all pull the trigger at the same time, we've seen some magic happen. The thing is, is that HKA over the course of this series have been given opportunities where they have leads, where they can, you know, continue to snowball. And just like you said, indecisive, hesitant, maybe a, a bit gun shy in terms of being in front of a large crowd. They have a lot of rookies on their team. Uh, when they do pull the trigger, like you said, it, it works out. And now they're starting to uh, be within touching distance of this gold difference between them and Fnatic. But it hasn't been consistent enough to put them in a winning position for the series. Spirit's yeah. getting caught there, charmed up. Battle Dance knocking him back and they even throw the barrel out once more. Fnatic really wanted to leave this Jogav off the map, but it's bought just enough time for the rest of Hong Kong Attitude to come through. Down he goes, shutdown mission, looking for the Hemo Plague. He finds it on multiple members, but the Redemption's coming down, and so is the Galio right on top of Jez's mission. Gets the kill, but he's gonna fall for it. Reckless turning it back around, but HK, they've decided they want to fully commit to this one as Unified takes down the Galio. Smoke is not cleared just yet. That's a shutdown for Caps. And now Gemini being chased back away from his own base. It ends up being a three for two in Fnatic's favor, but we're not done yet. Gemini trying to bait out Caps. Kaiwing attack his way in, work ground and everything. We're running into Broxa. Broxa. Oh no, the body slam forces the flash out. Insta Tornado, Reckless still on the chase. Let's see if they're able to find him under tower. He's gonna have to throw one barrel and not say goodbye just yet as they've brought Caps as well. Getting the bop up, Gemini tanking all that damage and even under the tower, Caps says, that's fine. I can throw a few more stones and get the ace. And Caps is just a beast on this Talia right now. He is doing so much work. And it might not be done yet, because here comes Rurus. All right, that fight was so long, the teleport came all the way back in, but instead of trying to turn for the fight, immediately just stops, clears away the control ward. Fnatic saw him coming. No, he actually just teleported for that control ward, Pyra. That, like, is a, that is a value teleport. I got to clear it right now. We take, like another, we take another look at this fight. I really want to highlight mission right now. So what he's trying to do is kind of lure and make sure that he gets a really nice demo play. But his tank is tanking so much damage, and he's not doing anything while that's happening. Now, he does get a good, good ultimate eventually. He does get into the back line. But his tank is dead, now he's suddenly in no man's land, and Fnatic just turned and kind of burned him. So, felt a little bit awkward coming out of Vladimir for that team fight. And like I said, Cax is a beast, he still has his ultimate. He turns, he blows up Unified, and then chases down, you know, two more kills. Yeah, so instead of closing that gap, it actually widens it just a little bit more for Fnatic. And now Caps, he is left isolated, has to flash over that wall, as Jezus had already gone back home. Now this will open up an opportunity for HK to start clearing out some vision. Instead, still eyeballing that mid turret. Remember, they don't have a single tower on the game. I believe it's also an elixir of iron for Jezus. Yeah, that'll keep you alive a little longer. Now he's real big. It's Big Bird. One, four, and eight now. Jezus is in this game. And he's definitely had some serious value in gauges, so he wants to make sure that if he goes in, he's not going to go down quite so easily. Fnatic, though, pinging at the Baron. You might want to use this one to try and force a fight. However, the 5v5s have definitely been less decisive of late. I mean, this has been the uh, the same play repeatedly. We've had, what, four back-to-back -back fights in the same area over the same objective, and neither team has really felt confident enough that once they take the fight, that they can get what they came for. And I have a feeling we're going to keep clashing heads here. Well, the Baron Dance has many steps. Sometimes gets a little bit repetitive here now. There's a big wave in that bottom lane in Fnatic's favor, though. I feel like they can bait this one out. Yeah, and it's Mission that's heading down for it. So, oh, he's deciding if I show here, Fnatic are already on the Baron. This would 100% be the go-ahead to try to burn it. Pretty easy to clear that one off. So there he goes. Now it's going to be 5v4 attempt to try and push them off. Now Fnatic pulling back just a little bit, still keeping the Baron aggroed up. Rerus, he could try to flash over for the Chomp Steal. Let's see if he gets it. Getting a little bit low. There's the Rupture thrown in. Does he dare? The Sejuani trying to wait around the side, but Unified Kaiwing already a little low as well. And they're chasing them back. Gen Gemini, he's trying to hang tough right now. The Baron's already reset because Fnatic decide they want to just completely turn this fight. Rear is knocked between a wall and a hard place. And Mission going around the side with the Ghost on. Doesn't find the Hemo Plague he's looking for. Still keeps that one. And now Fnatic still trying to chase for them. And they run straight into a healed up Unified. Rear is not so lucky as he tries to go back in, but only to be turned away immediately. Fnatic don't find what they're looking for. And unfortunately, they can't just immediately go back towards the Baron because, again, none of this damage will really stick. Yeah, they forced out the Cho'Gath, but the rest of the members from HKA are totally fine.
And the Cho'Gath's backed away, doesn't have that teleport, but he's still gonna be able to walk it out pretty quickly. And you know, you can understand the mentality from Fnatic. They don't wanna take the 50-50. They know that there's a possibility that Cho comes over the wall, that he finds the feast onto the Baron, that, you know, uh, Jim and I uses the smite. And so they say, it's 4v5, Vladimir's bottom. Let's look for the team fight instead. And now the team fight is gonna start once more. Gemini going forward, does not manage to land a stun off. And now the Baron is being done by two, while the rest of Fnatic push HKA back. They've clearly committed to the objective they want to be able to secure, but Rerus running forward. Let's see if he can get the flash over the wall just in time. He doesn't know it's happening. It's gone down. Smited by Broxa. And now Hong Kong Attitude have to deal with Fnatic's five-man Baron. And that was well executed from Fnatic. They don't even take the 5v5. They take the Baron for free and now looking for the fight. Oh, the flash forward, the taunt, and down goes the Vladimir. No pool for you. And Caps is even going to get some relief in the form of Soaz and Broxa. Jez is jumping in, getting a three-man charm on. And Hong Kong Attitude, it looks like things are not looking so good for this team flashing back away from the tower with the Baron Empowerment. Fnatic are charging for the win right now. They want to prove they can get into the group stages and they are so close to doing it. And Caps is already in the base. He's led with the wall. His team has a massive creep wave up into the top lane. Gemini flashing forward the shove and Gemini's gone down even through the stun. Doesn't mean a damn thing. Two members of Hong Kong Attitude are all that remain to try and push Caps back, but up in the top, they're losing pressure. Yeah, Soas has teleported up into the top lane. They still have a massive creep wave. There's two cannon waves. They're going to end. And it's 15 seconds before anyone's even going to come right back up. So Fnatic, they realize they have the superior fight with only two members remaining. Make that one! Kai Wing's all the way back to base, and Fnatic are looking to put this one away. Caps goes golden, and he has got a big smile on his face, no doubt, as Fnatic looking for the final fight. Desperate finish here for Hong Kong Attitude, but it is one, two, three, the coup de grace, and Fnatic are moving on to the groups here at Worlds 2017. And Fnatic, look over at Cloud9. Anything you can do. You can do better. <laughs> they finish the games faster and just have a dominant performance in the best of five that a lot of people were looking at that this had the highest chance for upset. And Fnatic carried from multiple lanes, multiple members, and from early and late game. Fnatic absolutely earned some massive respect for themselves in this series. Game one, we saw some of the same type of team play, but it was still clean and clinical to come back into it. Games two and three, we saw that multifaceted Fnatic that we know could shine, putting resources on caps. And when he's got gold, that boy's a monster. It's not just him. Again, also props to Jezus. I love watching this guy get a hold of the Rakan and then all of the uh, the advantages that he can buy from Fnatic, Fnatic in these team fights. Engage after engage, how he teamed up with Broxa, how he teamed up with Caps was a lot of the reason why Fnatic snowballed so heavily. And decisive play from Fnatic. So they can definitely go forward into the group stages of Worlds with their heads held high. Now, unfortunately, on the other side, that does mean that the third seed from LMS will not be moving on. So Hong Kong Attitude, they made a valiant attempt, losing out in that tiebreaker that tie against 1907 Fenerbahce, earning themselves to look across from Fnatic.